SWOT analysis, I like it, using an acronym. Um, your business background obviously gave you an idea to help build that acronym. SWAT for you means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's really good. It's good and organized. This gives you a little bit more uh, realization. Of what Put we some, need to work on. Yeah, and that's really good, right? Right. It's a reflection. Yeah. So when you, one thing I will elaborate, because the rest is pretty good. One thing that I will elaborate, because the rest is pretty good here. Um, you wrote threats, liabilities. What do you mean by that? Um... You just write liabilities. Yeah. Oh, liabilities. Just on just what? Um. So threats are liabilities, as in if somebody were to get injured. Okay. And then that would ruin our, our like name. If, yeah, our name sort of. That's sort of like our threat, like things that could go wrong throughout the working, working out process. Right. So, would it be safe to say that? with the thorough approach that you guys have had with myself, learning not just this business strategy, but the actual execution and the education strategies of the actual encompassing workouts, have you removed some of those liability issues? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, how important is the education and how important is the execution and the paying attention in your training session? Right. right. So, continue down this path where you're really focusing on learning the strategies that a lot of people don't want to do. Right? Not a lot of people want to learn the corrective exercise strategy. Not a lot of people want to take anatomy and really dissect it. Right? A lot of people just use what works, what they constantly see in the general pop, which is you know, learn your deadlifts, learn your squats, and you know, learn how to work hard. That, that comes. But if you don't have an appreciation for uh, controlling your weight distribution, if you don't have an appreciation for fixing muscle imbalances because of the general patterns that people are doing, every single day um, you're going to run into some problems as soon as you start introducing forms of resistance and for a lot of people because they've been taught and staples are you know squats and deadlifts they get on a platform it's still a fixed position and until you created uh, awareness spatial and body awareness until you created a uh, release of tightness adhesions or imbalances in the body you will come up with some issues along the way as soon as you start introducing progressive forms of resistance so keep that in mind moving forward you've kind of already addressed some of your liabilities but I wanted to reiterate that with you and I'll reiterate it with Trayvon it's super important that you're still taking the education process and you're always dissecting I like to think of the gym as a more of a dissecting or a lab Laboratory, as opposed yeah, yeah. as opposed to a gym where you lift weights and get huge that's part of it that's the byproduct of paying attention that's the part of analyzing and understanding mechanics and how things should fluidly move and stuff like that. Correct. But until you've applied those mechanics first and they've reached those parameters, mm. don't increase the workload or don't increase the intensity or the, uh, the difficulty because that'll put you at risk. If you pay attention to that, you will get very confident and comfortable with introducing new forms of resistance and variability. You will it'll literally just come off the top of your head. But until you understand that concept, don't progress people in that sense. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. Totally.